Am I hearing some youthful shout at this time? Woo! Come on, make it louder. Make it stronger. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you do something right now that only youths can do? What can you do as a youth to praise God? What can you do to praise Him? You mean you cannot shout? You cannot jump? You cannot praise Him? Glory to God! Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter 2 verse 14. I've written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because you are strong. The identity of youth is strength. Some people use their strength for the devil. I'm sure that person is not here tonight or this afternoon. We are here using our strength for God. We are here demonstrating that God is inside us. We are here showing that we can praise Him. That we can thank Him. That we can celebrate Him. My God, is a young person in this house. Come on, praise him again. Thank you, Lord. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Now, raise your hand. Join me to give thanks to God. The God of Shiloh 2018. The God of Shiloh from the beginning. The God of the next Shiloh. The God of next levels. Somebody praise him. Somebody thank him. Give him the glory. If you are blessed yesterday, give him the glory. If you will be blessed again this time around, give him the glory. He deserves the glory. He deserves the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will praise you, Lord. With every breath that I take, I will praise you, Lord. This promise I make, should eternity end, start all over again, even then I will Somebody raise your hand. I will pray. With every breath. With every breath. Somebody, I like you to speak your way to your peak. There is a peak for you. You got to speak your way to that peak. Forget about who you are. There is a place for you. There is a place for who? There is a place for you. Two young men said, We are well able. 
Ten older people say we are not able. Those who said they were able, they got there. You will surely get there. I am climbing to my next level. I am going to my next level. By the power of my Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost on my inside. That's what I want to hear somebody begin to say right now. If you are that person, be strong in your prophecy. Be strong in your declaration. I don't care about the choices of others. I have chosen to move forward. I have chosen to advance my destiny. Am I sure I'm hearing somebody right now? Somebody who will return to share testimony at Shiloh 2019. Will you make that declaration right now? I'm going to my next level. Academically, maritally, in my business, in my career. Next level. Next level. That's what I desire. That's what I have. Somebody say it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Please get seated. Use a life. Next levels. That will be your testimony. Welcome again to the second day at the Youth Forum in Shiloh 2018. With full assurance in my heart that every word spoken concerning you again this afternoon shall find speedy fulfillment. I thought that prayer is for somebody here. I bring to you again greetings and goodwill and blessing from our spiritual father, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedepo, whose heart is with you passionately, all of the time desiring and praying in all sincerity that you will not only get to his level, you will go beyond it. Not many people are saying amen. Yeah. Only those who believe they will go beyond are saying amen. Yeah. As arrows in the hand of the mighty, we are shooting you forward into the next generation. You will do greater than we have ever seen. You will do mightier than we have ever experienced. Some people are saying our back in this generation. The things you will do will be so great, all your mockers will not see your back. In the precious name of Jesus. You know, yesterday I told you, you can only backbite the back you see. You can bite the back because you can see the back god will take you to a place where nobody backbiter will see your back yeah. did you say amen to that yeah. god will take you to your rehoboth and take you beyond your rehoboth yeah. in the precious name of jesus yeah. our teaching series this being part two is engaging the covenant of next levels. Remember, the running scripture for this theme is Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. Ye have gone round, you've compassed this mountain long enough, you have moved around the same spot. Long enough. That is, you have passed the time for that level. Long enough. Say, so, I mean, long enough. You have come past long enough. You are moving, but you are not making progress. And the answer to that is turn 
G, not word. Turn. It's never your turn for next level until you turn. 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 You have hung around the same thing for too long. Turn. If one door is shut, turn. There's another door waiting for you. And not just one, seven doors. For when your enemy come against you in one way, the Lord will open to you doors in seven ways. Now listen to me. Somebody is here. You have been resisted by the enemy. The next thing that will happen to you is sevenfold open doors. I know that person is receiving it with a loud amen now. No matter the opposition, as a child of God, you are ordained for continuous change of levels. The path of a just man is as a shining light. He is ordained to shine more and more and more and more until the perfect day. It is for space that you have it recorded only twice. More and more and more. And for someone, more. For someone, and another person, more. More. Continuous progress. Unending progress. Testimony upon testimony. From today, your testimony will not be occasional. From testimony, your testimony will be every month. And after you have stabilized at every month, it will become every week. And when you have gained stability every week, it will become every day. And from every day, it will become every hour. Somebody changing level, say a loud amen. Remember also that God has ordained you to be a pace setter, a reference point, a trailblazer, doing new things. While they are celebrating the new thing you have done, you are doing another thing. So they are confused. They don't know where to catch up with you again. You are ordained a pathfinder. Where people are saying, we don't know what to do again. You tell them, follow me. Follow me. I know that's the next thing to do. You follow me. You follow me. You will be the man that they are following from now. You will become the fashion of the day. Through you, church will become a fashion. You see, when people are following you, it simply means that you have become a fashion. The toast of the society. The one that they cannot do without. The one without whose presence they cannot do anything. You know, in the society, there are individuals called the toast of the society. That means if they are not in an occasion, the occasion is not holding. When they appear there, they say, oh, are you aware so-so-so person was there? That's you that they'll be talking about. In the precious name of Jesus. We're looking at part two, engaging the covenant of next levels. Covenant is a point of agreement between two individuals agreeing on what each party will do in order to move their lives forward. The mirror of God's word gives us the correct perspective. God's word 
is the spiritual mirror that reveals who we are. Who we are. Not what people think you are. Not even what you think you are. Remember I told you yesterday that you are inadequate to describe yourself. Why? Because you are not your maker. I don't have the capacity to tell you details of what this microphone can do. And this reason is very simple. I am not the manufacturer of it. The best person that can describe the function of this microphone is sure the manufacturer. The microphone cannot describe itself. God created you like this microphone. You cannot describe yourself. Is the one who can do so. And that's why this microphone, when it will be sold on the shelf, came with what is called the operation manual. To say, this is what this microphone is meant for. This is its worth. You don't have the capacity to describe yourself. You can only discover yourself. You didn't design you. Your designer sent you here with full package of who you are in order for nobody to underrate you that's why he gave you the book this book is essentially concerning you this book is written because of you this book is written so that you can be free from people who will wrongly describe you this book about is about the revelation of your capacity of your ability This is why you cannot successfully operate without continuous discovery of who you are from this book. And we continue. What does the mirror of this book say about you? This book reveals that you are redeemed a fruitful vine and not a barren fig. Somebody say with me, I am fruitful. Now, don't let your mind quickly grow to fruitfulness or pregnancy. Amen. Because <laughs> I can see some people are very careful saying that I'm fruitful. Fruitfulness simply means to be productive. To be productive. In your field of endeavor. To live productively. That every time somebody comes to you, they find something to take away profitably for their benefit. And I'd like you to live in the consciousness of that. Nobody ever comes my way without being profited. Nobody ever comes my way and live the same way he came. Beginning with the smile on your face. Beginning with the words of your mouth. Beginning with the attitude that you put up. You are meant to be an inspiration to somebody. You are not a burden, but a blessing. Fruitfulness also connotes blessing. Say with me, I am fruitful. Let me hear you say it again. Say also, I am profitable. I am a blessing. That's who you are meant to be. Psalm 128, verses 1 to 5. You are meant to be a fruitful vine. 
a fruitful vine. Productive, profitable. Go with this consciousness everywhere you find yourself. As an employee, you are a fruitful employee. You step into a place and the place prospers like Joseph in the house of Potiphar. He went in there as a slave. He became a blessing to that family. To a point that Potiphar said, ever since you stepped into this house, everything has been prospering. Jacob stepped into the house of Laban. And Laban said, I have learned from experience that ever since you came in here, I have been prosperous. Now, stretch forth your hands here, please. From today, everywhere you appear, you shall be a fruitful vine. Everywhere you appear, you shall be a blessing. Everywhere you are, at whatever level, you shall be productive. In the name of Jesus. If you leave a place and they don't miss you there, then you didn't bless the place. Don't look at yourself and say, who am I? You are a fruitful vine. Jacob was a slave. No CV. No reference point. No recommendation paper. He was like a stool in a house. Being a slave. You know, in their days, a slave is like a property. It's like, like, like bed or like stool. You can destroy it anytime. Nobody will question you. In their time, when a slave is killed, nobody asks you, why did you kill him? You bought it as a property. Yet, he was conscious of what he carried. They put a name tag on his head as a slave, but inside him was a fruitful vine. What people tag you to be is different from what it is written for you to be. Somebody, say with me again, what did God say about you from his word? What have I just told you right now? You are a fruitful vine. Number two, you are redeemed a lively stone. To live a super healthy life. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. You are a lively stone. You never hear that stone ever gets sick. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You are a lively stone. Therefore, I decree from this afternoon, no more sickness around your body. Yeah. Did somebody say loud amen to that? Yeah. Your appearance at Shiloh 2018 at this Youth Alive Forum has finally brought an end to sickness in your life. Everyone attempting to hurt a stone is hurting himself. Therefore, from today, anyone who attempts to hurt you will return full of hurts. Number three, you are redeemed an ambassador of Christ to command dignity. That's something unique about ambassadors. If you have met any ambassador before, they address them the way they address the president of their nation. They call them His Excellency or Her Excellency. The same dignity. The same honor. You are Christ's ambassador. How did Christ live when he was here? Everything he needed was provided. Everything. He was dignified. He was honored. He was respected everywhere. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. He said, now, then, we are ambassadors of Christ. We are 
I am an ambassador of Christ. Go with that mentality everywhere you appear. You are to be treated with dignity. No matter your age. As a young boy in school, I was always treated with dignity. I carried myself as an ambassador of Christ. Most of my classmates who are not even believers call me Brother David because I was behaving with dignity. Nobody called me a boy. Amen. <laughs> I was in my late, you know, teens as a student. Nobody ever called me a boy because I was behaving dignified. You need to carry yourself with the mentality of what God made you. Don't go around town like, like a, a, an area boy. Cut your hair anyhow. With different colors. Green hair, blue hair. You know, the way you dress is the way they address you. Your trouser is pulling down with, uh, you know, what's the one they call inside? Eh? Boxer. <laughs> how, how will they not carry you when they are carrying ropes? Carry yourself as an ambassador with dignity. With dignity. You don't find an ambassador dressing anyhow. As bad as our world has become, you still see presidents of nations dress well. Well dressed. To represent the office that you are elected to. You have been elected to God's office as an ambassador. You should appear to be one at all times. You know, today we hear um, a lot of people say, you have to look like them to win them. It's not true. It's not true. I've been a soul winner. I didn't have to look like them before they get saved. It's not true. Don't look like the world. Because you want to win the world. Jesus didn't look like them to win them. Jesus didn't have to look like the harlot to save the harlot. No. Let's carry right mentality. And stop the infiltration of the devil in the church. You don't have to dress like them to win them. Piercing your ear, putting your ring. I mean, that's, that's, you look like a careless boy. You don't have to look like them to win them. It's a deception of the devil creeping into the church in order to weaken our system. I go on outreach and I meet several kinds of people. Young people, drug addicts everywhere. I don't have to look like them to win them. No. When you carry the dignity mentality as an ambassador, you make the difference. I thought somebody saying amen to that. You don't have to look like a smoker to change to, to save a smokers. You don't have to look like a drunkard to save drunkards. No. What saves people is conviction of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, before you know it, we will be carrying people, pretenders into the church. You will be thinking they are saved and they are not saved because of the approach you give to them. You are God's ambassador. Number four, you are redeemed a seed of Abraham. Abraham is an embodiment of many things. In one word, Abraham was a blessing. A blessing. In blessing, I will bless you. And thy seed shall be blessed. Carry the mentality that everywhere you go to, you are a blessing. Blessing. 
people see you and they rejoice that you are here. You see, your the way you behave determines what you become. Every time you see God say something about you, start behaving it until you become it. Once Abraham was told that it would be a blessing, you know what Abraham would do? Abraham would sit in front of his house, waiting for passerby. In the process, he entertained angels without knowing. Oh, you look tired. What way can I help you? Why don't you come and stay in my house? Take your lunch here and continue your journey. Why don't you come in here? Have a good rest. Take water. Wash your feet. And as he's calling people in, he will be telling the wife, Hey, Madam Sarah, do you still have some soup out there? Why don't you take a lamb and kill the lamb? He was behaving the father of nations. Until he became father of nations. Behave. What you want to become. As a teenager in those days, for instance, when I'm in a taxi or a bus with other brethren, I tell them, I have paid for you. I have paid your transport. I have been behaving the father before I tasted becoming a father. Behave as a peacemaker when other brethren are fighting. Not as a troubleshooter in the church or in your fellowship. Behave not as a deceiver. You want to marry somebody, be straight to the point. Sister, I feel led to marry you. Not, uh, shall we be friends? Let's be friends for a while. What is friend? Straightforward. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope somebody is not angry with me at the studio there. <laughs> Very simple, straightforward. Simple, straightforward. Don't send a you know, card to somebody or to three people. I love you, sister, I love you. Don't let anybody know what I said. I love you. I love you. Habba. Why are you behaving like an area boy? Straight. Don't meander about issues. Straight. Behaving the father. Behave with dignity. That's how to live the Christian life. Not in deception. Abraham didn't deceive anybody. Abraham didn't collect things from anybody. Abraham was not courteous. Abraham would not touch what is not his own. Behave Abrahamic. Abraham represents fatherhood. He represents a blessing. I will not touch what is mine. If you are walking somewhere, don't look for what to take from there. Don't be part of destroying the society. Carry yourself with dignity that when people know, you don't have to tell them you are a child of God before they know you are. Somebody say amen. I hope I'm making sense to someone here. Genesis 22, 17 and 18, Abraham was said to be a blessing. And we, as seed of Abraham, as Isaac, as Jacob, we are children of blessing. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And of course, verse 29. And Galatians chapter 3, or chapter 4, verse 27. We are the seed of Abraham. Behave Abrahamic. Behave the covenant. 
As young persons, if you get married, behave like Father Abraham. Behave like Mother Sarah. Who called her husband my Lord? Amen. Is somebody protesting to that? Praise the Lord. You know, people talk about equal rights. You have to follow the scriptures the way it is. If you understand the scripture, you would not, there will not be a need to be talking about equal rights. No. Because ev- everyone knows what their rights are from scriptures. Not wanting to take advantage of the other. Very simple. For instance, that husband, love your wife. The wife should not go demanding from the man. But the Bible says you should love me. No, God didn't tell you that. He's the man he told. Pray for him to come to a point of understanding when he will be loving you. And not just that. You do what you should do for him to do what he should do. Amen. I have never told my wife to respect me. I've never. There won't be need for that. I do what he tells me to do. I just love her. To what point? To the point of shedding blood. Like the scripture says. All man, love your wife and give yourself to her even as Christ gave himself to the church. So my yardstick is how did Jesus love the church? Have I loved the church enough? I ask myself that question. That's what God told me to do from his word. And I discover that the more I do what he tells me to do, the better the response I get. I tell young people, you want your wife to be smiling to you, be doing what she will, that will make her to smile. Give her a check at the right time. You will know she knows how to smile. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. For years, I've never waited for my wife to tell me what she needs. I mean, if you are not, listen to this. Praise God. You know, you have to be sensitive. You have to be sensitive and be sensible. And be responsive and be responsible. If you do the right thing at the right time, you avoid crisis. You want your husband to love you, let his food be ready at the, at the right time. Simple. Amen. <laughs> because an hungry man is an angry man. Are you there? Well, please permit me, we are not in a marriage seminar this time around. Now, let's begin to round up for the day. Amen. How many of you desire an encounter tonight and encounter night? That's why we have to close early. (laughs) I don't want you to miss your encounter. God is a good God. Now, We are not just to discover who we are. We are also to discover what we must do to become what we are meant to be. What God does is, He shows you where you are going and also shows you how to get there. What you should be and how you should become that thing. So, what must I do to experience next levels? Number one, I must possess next levels mentality. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks, so he becomes. Your thought 
your thought is a passage to your fulfillment. As he thinks, so he becomes. It is thinking process that leads to actualization of destiny. Think it. Think it. When your thoughts are full, it will overflow to action. Action is simply an outflow of thought. That's why no action takes place without the process of thought. Out of the abundance of the mind, the hand moves, the feet moves. Physical movement is born out of mental movement. Genesis chapter 13 verses 14 and 15. The Lord said to Abraham, hey, come on, look round, look forward. As far as you can see, as far as you can see, so will I do for you. Please listen to this. Somebody may physically block you from movement, but nobody can stop you from thinking. Does that make some sense? If you move this way, they block you. Think again. That's one freedom everybody has, including prisoners. They may barricade you, but they cannot stop your thinking. What a joy. Nobody, no torture can stop your thinking. As far as you can see, we determine how far you can go. Now, if you check that scriptures down the line, we don't have the time. After God said that to Abraham, the Bible says, and Abraham removed his tent and moved forward. You can't be a thinker and be stagnated. You can't be a thinker and be stinking. If you are stinking, it's an indication that you are not thinking. Let me check that verse down the line in that same chapter. And Abraham removed his tent. Your thought will always result to an action. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the... He moved from where he was. Remember, you have compassed this mountain long enough. It's time for you. I told you yesterday also that what goes on upstairs determines what manifests downstairs. Number two, continue to crave access to divine secrets regarding every issue of your life. For everything God has spoken to you, there are secrets you can trade to assume to that level. Think about Job. The secret of God made him. Job chapter 29 from verse 4 to 18. The secret of the Lord. As it was in the days of my youth. The days of my youth. The days of my youth. Now you see, at the stage of the youth, you can think wide and wild. The best time for you to be a deep thinker is when you are young. You think wide and wild. It's the secrets of God in the days of my use. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Chapter 2, verse 16 to 19. Can I ask you please put your hand on your head. From today, this will not be an ordinary box you are carrying again. From today, great treasures shall be imagined from this box on your head. Now listen to this. 
Your head will be a burden on your neck when you are not utilizing it. Your head is not meant for hairstyle. No. Many people are decorating the external when the inside is rotten. Listen to this. By way of provoking yourself, before you go for your next year court, where they dress you, they make one side go this way, another side go. You should ask yourself, what is this thing about? Knock it. Knock that thing. And tell it, wake up. Wake up. Not meant for decoration. Things are not working. And you are bobbing your head every three days. What are you bobbing for? What are you bobbing for? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, some of you who have read stories of great men. Now, I read some bit of story about Bill Gates when he was young in pursuit of his, you know, ambition. For days he would not bath. He had plenty of dandruffs because he was lost in his pursuit. Lost in his pursuit. Now, if Bill Gates scratches his head today, you would think that that's where another discovery is. And you find some people scratching their head. They say, why? They say, that's how Bill Great. That's how he scratches idea out of his head. <laughs> now I decree that just as it works for God's servant, our spiritual father, Bishop David Oedipo, your head shall be receiving divine secrets. <laughs> and number three... Continue to serve God and the interest of his kingdom as a lifestyle. Continue to serve God. If you are here at the hour of visitation this morning, the concluding teaching was on Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. That's how we grew up as youths. Going from village to village for evangelism were non-entities then. People laughed. People mocked. People said many crazy things. But today, the difference is clear. I have never come across any of my mates who I have to sit behind on any occasion. In any event, they all sit behind me. I'm telling you the truth. Seek you first. And all these things shall be added. I don't work out things. No. Things seek after me. I have paid my dues. I'm now receiving my rewards. your due. Serve the Lord your God in the days of your youth. The reason why many youths don't serve God is because they fear to be mocked. In those days to ever appear as a Christian, you will suffer the mockery minimum one week. Bro, sis, you don't join them. Fellow, fellow, follow. Now, so, so they clap for their fellowship. And in those days, there were no musical instrument. Plenty of opportunity to mock on. To carry Bible in the open then, you need, you need to, you needed to pray courageously. God, give me courage to carry my Bible. <laughs> Except only on Sundays. But I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is a power of God unto salvation. Some of you may have heard about a man called Harry G. Lotonio. A man that was used to build 50% of the heart moving equipment that was used during the Second World War. He was a dropout in school. He failed mathematics. So they dropped him out of school. 
But he found himself in Matthew 6.33. He held to that scriptures. Arlie G. Lotonio ended as a founder of university and taught engineering and mathematics that he failed. He didn't have to go to learn it again. What he got at the end of the day was an honorary doctorate degree. People may drop you. Circumstance may drop you. But hold to Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first. Especially as youth. Seek ye first. You know what youths represent? They represent virgin, virginity. A virgin simply, literally means one that has not done it before. Fresh. You need to serve God with the freshness of your age. Ask people who get saved at 40, at 50. They came with batches in their body. You know, a brand new car, you don't see any scratch on it. But when the car has become four or five years old, you see some crash, some batch. That's how many people who get saved at old age, they have had some batches. Some regretting how that they have married about three wives. Some regretting how that they have destroyed their kidney with smoking and drinking. Now that none of those things has happened to you, you need to give yourself as a youth, as a virgin to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord! With the strength of your youth. One of those days at about age 21, we went for village evangelism. And in those places where we go to, vehicle passes through there only once in a day. Once to go. Once to return. Return flight. You miss it, you talk to your legs. So we missed the return flight. And as youths, thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And trekked not less than 20 kilometers to get back to campus. Excited. Now I don't ever, ever will need to trek again in my life. I paid my dues. I'm now repaying the reward. Please pay your dues. Serve the Lord your God in the days of your youth. Give room for people to mock you so you can give opportunity to God to make you. Until they mock you, God will never make you. Please listen to this. If you are yet to be mocked, you are yet to be zealous. If you are yet to be mocked, you are yet to be so. You should serve God to a point where people become concerned for you. In those days, I mean, people get worried so much about us. And look, the way you are fasting, won't you die? Fasting machines. You see the neck bone come out. Everybody can see it visibly and they'll be mocking you. Now you can't see my neck bone again. I paid my dues. You have to pay your dues. Many of us are wishing, oh, I wish God would make me become like Bishop Wedebo. Don't wish that again. Don't wish that. What you should wish now is, I, I wish God would make me labor like Bishop Wedebo. I wish God would make me serve when, like the way he served when he was young. That's the prayer you need to pray. Seek you for the kingdom of God. It's righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Be steadfast in serving God. Even if it remains you alone. Be steadfast. Be an alone Christianity in your pursuit of God. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Be ye steadfast. Abandon in the works of the Lord. Knowing fully well that your reward is on the way coming. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise God. I say praise God. Today by the grace of God, we've had many testimonies of God's servant and some of us following through. We are not only helping people, we are helping communities. Now. Helping communities. Building and building and building for communities. Mocked before. Made now. By the hand of God. 
now receive the grace for engagement in kingdom stewardship. In Jesus' precious name. If you got anything, give Jesus a big hand for it. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, quickly, before we go. You are here this evening. Let me begin this way. You are not a proper Christian. One leg in, one leg out. Today you are hot. Another day you are cold. People have to be persuading you, encouraging you to go to church, to read your Bible, to serve God. You carry Bible in one hand. You carry cigarette in the other hand. You carry one bottle of, you know, can can or brukutu with another hand. For how long will you be shaky, shaky believer? For how long? Make up your mind. Every time you are under pressure, your friends are influencing you wrongly. Why don't you jettison those friends and make the best of life in serving Jesus? I want every moment to stop right now, please. If you have been patient the last more than one hour, you should be patient for a few more minutes now. Let's honor Jesus. Stand where you are. If you know you have been that shaky Christian, backsliding for one year, restored for three months, backsliding for another two years, restored for nine months, you need to stabilize right now. I want to pray with you this evening. This is in addition to those who have not given their life to Jesus at all as Lord and Savior. You know how much Satan has been tormenting your life. How much he has useless your life. Will you allow him to continue to do so? Why don't you come to Jesus, the repairer of life? He said, come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you the fulfillment you are looking for. Whatever you are, you want to respond to this call, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. And immediately, take that step. Come to the altar. I want to pray with you right now. Come to the altar. Maybe you felt you cannot be free from occultic powers. Maybe you belong to any of the occultic groups. Jesus will not condemn you for it. He will save you. Are you having problem with certain habits? Pornography? Inclusive? Homosexuality? Lesbianism? And all kind of stuff. You want to be free. You know the things you do in the secret where nobody can see you. When you lock up your door, you know what you are doing. You know what you are watching. You know those stuff you are reading. You know how that you need to be stable in the faith. But you are shaky here and there. Come quickly. Got my mind made up. And I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind.
please lift up your right hand, all of you with me in front here. You're making the greatest decision of your life. You're praying the greatest prayer right now. Bow your heads, please, to avoid distraction as you raise your hands. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Make it louder if you can. Lord Jesus, I come to you today to receive your free gift of salvation. Have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. Wash them away from me. Make me your child. Right now, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. As a result, I am now born again. I am now a child of God. Jesus, give me your power to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone in the congregation, join them. Say loud, amen. amen. Please open your eyes. I can see somebody shouting. I can see somebody smiling. Glory to God forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Please, somebody here, your future is colorful. Your future is very bright. You will surely get there. 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 Bishop Oedeko got there, you will get there. My humble self, I am getting there gradually, you will get there. You fulfill destiny. You fulfill purpose. Nothing will hinder you. You will not die young. You will fulfill the number of your days. You will be a blessing to your world. In the name of Jesus. Raise your hand. Give glory to God again. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Now, I decree your next level's encounter. From here, I decree nothing hinders you from assessing your next level. As you have declared it, so it shall be for you. Wave your hand one more time as you give glory to God. Ready for encounter night. Ready for the last session of the youth forum. God bless you. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus.